Almost there. Welcome to the first episode of Colorado Wild, I think is what I'm going to call it. Basically the idea is that I'm going to be spending the next three or five or ten years or however long it takes to photograph all of the wilderness areas in Colorado. I think there's 43, there's definitely more than 40 of them. Um, and I'm going to do all of it on black and white film and all of it with the Hasselblad 501CM, which makes square pictures if you don't know much about medium format film photography. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to work on a big like a long-term photo project instead of just like short little, I don't know, social media hits. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have a lot more thoughts on all of that, but I'll leave it there for now. This is episode one, I'm in the Raywall Wilderness. Uh, just hiked in about six and a half miles, maybe a little more. Uh, I think 25 or 2600 feet of elevation. It wasn't too bad of a hike. The last mile was pretty steep though, and it got really humid as it, it, it rained quite a bit. Um, so I was just drenched in sweat when I got up here and totally wiped out. But I had some water and a cliff bar and some peanut butter pretzel nuggets, which is some of the best snacks in the backcountry. And uh, feeling a lot better now, except for the fact that there's like 100 million mosquitoes around here, but this is doing a pretty good job of keeping most of them away. But I think I should probably set up camp. It looks like it might rain again. All right, that's camp set up. It's just a tent, but it's nice to have a dry space. Um, I'm taking camera stuff, empty water bottles, food with me just so no animals get into it. Um, and I'm running pretty low on water, so I'm gonna head right down here to the creek, uh, fill up, maybe fill up an extra bottle just so I don't have to do it several more times tonight. And then, might do some photography. Got the hassle bud with me in the backpack, so. Feeling pretty good about this in black and white. This is a super contrasty, just crunchy scene. And I love it. I love, I love some contrasty black and white shots. So hopefully the Acros does a good job with that. <sighs> I did end up taking two shots earlier before I went back to set up camp. Um, yeah, the clouds were kind of cool and I just wanted to kind of get a shot under my belt. Did I say two shots? I think I just took one. Anyway, let's filter some water. Um, oh wow, look at the rainbow over there. I'll show you. 
That's amazing. What a cool spot. <sighs> Good job, Raywa. Raywa Wilderness. All right, water. I don't know, I think the mountains there are amazing. I think that might be a better like sunrise shot just because the sun's kind of, it'll be directly into the frame and there's really nice light over there with dark color. I think I'm gonna shoot that way. Yeah, I think like right here. All right, I'm gonna have to use that tripod, but I'll show you. I'll show you when I'm all set up. Okay, I struggled quite a bit. I don't know if you can hear me. Is that better? I struggled quite a bit with uh, not having the camera shadow in the frame, so I think I got it. I just put it pretty low. Um, now I just need the meter, the spot meter thing. I think I'm gonna, I don't know, try it with and without. I think I'm gonna try it with them without a red filter. But I like the composition, it's fine. It's nothing crazy, but it's, it's good. I'll show you. And then of course that's, that's backwards, it's flipped, because uh, that's how it works. I ended up taking seven shots. Uh, is the sun right? Yeah, I meant to take six. I took three on the 80 millimeter lens. I hope you can hear me. So whatever. Um, and three and three, but kind of four on the 50 millimeter lens. The compositions were like fine. I mean, they were like nothing to write home about, but it, they might turn out nicely. Um, yeah, I did. The first one with no filter, the first one on each lens with no filter, and then focusing at the hyperfocal distance. And then I did the second one, the exact same, but focusing at infinity just to see what the difference would be. They're both, at, I think they were all at F22. I've got it written down. Um, and then the third one was also focused at infinity, just so I'm not wasting too much film. And, uh, with the the red filter with, with this guy red filter that should add a lot of contrast to the to like the shadows and maybe even the the bluish clouds in the sky um but i'm not sure it ends up knocking like three ish stops of light uh down off of the scene so i was just kind of metering through the filter uh, which seems to work fairly well and uh, the, the third shot on the 50 millimeter lens, I totally forgot to, um, totally forgot to change the settings after I metered. So that's gonna be like three stops under exposed. So we'll see. So I did that uh, one more time. So that's seven shots. I've taken eight so far. So I've got four more, I think, left on that roll. So let's go see if we can find something else to shoot tonight. No. Look at this. It's uh, July 18th. That's Colorado summer for you. All right.
Well, that's a nice shot, but maybe in the morning. Yeah, I don't know. It's okay. No rush. I'm trying to slow down these days. And um, really think it through. But there's no pressure. This is a long-term project. I don't have to get any pictures. Huh, I think I already got a few. Which is nice. Oops. <laughs> Which is nice. Well, didn't end up taking any more pictures and the light's pretty much gone, which is fine. Obviously I could have taken, you know, a whole, several rolls of pictures here, it's amazing. I'm just trying to really, really slow down and work on compositions, work on just, I don't know, getting better at photography. The number of times that I've gotten back, I'm like, oh, I wish I would have like worked on the composition a little bit more. Well, it's a lot of times. There's no pressure to get a shot, so I'm gonna head back to camp and make some dinner. Uh, I'm having pad thai tonight, so that should be nice. I think I might have found a couple spots for the morning, but we'll see. One, man, air's thin up here. One of the reasons that I am wanting to do black and white is because I don't love waking up at sunrise, so. I'll be up for like early morning, but I'm not gonna, I probably won't be up for first light. But that's okay. I think I just want like light hitting these mountains and that should happen for quite a while in the morning. Get some good contrasty shots. So dinner time. recording I uh oops <laughs> um it's uh 555 but I am very much not a morning person so I'm still in the tent but got a pretty amazing view of the sunrise behind me behind you behind the camera and um yeah I slept amazing last night amazingly I slept really well last night uh, I don't know how much photography I'll do this morning Nice to finish off the roll, get four more shots in, um, just so I can get this stuff developed pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I mean, if I were shooting color, I definitely would have wanted to shoot that at sunrise, but I, I don't know. It, it was nice to sleep in a little bit. <laughs> um, I'll probably get up and do a little bit more photography here in a bit, but I'm actually running out of space on this memory card on the video, so I'm not going to do that much more video this morning. Um, I'll probably... Just shoot a few more shots. Probably won't film much of it. I only have like 35 minutes left. Next time I'll bring more memory cards. I thought this one would be plenty. 
Probably just gonna mm, wake up a little bit slowly, make some coffee. Yeah, might take some pictures, then make some coffee, and head back down. What a great trip. This is an amazing hike. I really, really am impressed by the Rewa Wilderness. I feel like there's so many of these hidden gems here in Colorado, and I, uh, you gotta hike to them. I'm sure there are some amazing places that you can get to by like Jeep or, Jeep or something, but in general, now that I can finally hike again, I wasn't able to hike for about 10 years. I'll probably talk about that more in depth in another video someday. But now that I can hike again, it's amazing to be able to get out and really explore these places and find all these hidden gems. And if if this random trail that I picked is this amazing, I feel like that's a pretty good indication that I picked a good state to live in. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I'll probably, if I haven't yet, I'll probably show the videos, <laughs> the videos, the photos that I've taken this weekend here in a sec. And, uh... Yeah, and then probably wrap it up. I don't think I'm going to film much on the way down. One, because I'm running out of footage um, based on this memory card. And two, you've already seen that trail, and I don't know that I really want to film anymore. Um, so, and a great weekend. Glad I got up. Um, that was a nice sunrise. I mean, there wasn't like, there's no clouds in the sky really. I guess a little bit, but um, mostly it was just amazing alpine glow up on those peaks. Kind of glad I was just able to enjoy it and not have to worry about photographing it. But that said, I'm probably gonna go, hmm. I'm gonna get under the creek and see if I can get in a couple shots on the Hasselblad. Probably not gonna film it though. Um, just gonna enjoy the photography, enjoy the morning. Um, yeah, I think I'll probably call that a video. Maybe make some coffee before I leave. Then head back down, back to civilization. So, yeah. Okay, let's talk about the photos from the trip. I went through uh, one roll of, of film with this camera, uh, which on this guy is 12 shots. And I, I shot, I think, six different scenes. So not a ton of photos, especially coming from digital, but I'd say overall a fairly productive trip. Um, in general, I'm really happy with the shots. I'd never shot with this camera before. Uh, it literally came in the mail like two days before I went. And I'd never shot Fuji Acros black and white film. And I'm just absolutely blown away with both of them. Um, I need to get my hands on some more Fuji Acros. It seems to be sold out in 120 everywhere, but I have to find some even though it's kind of expensive. It's been about a month since the trip. Um, I waited a while before I even scanned the film. I, I kind of like the idea of just setting it aside for a bit so that I can be at least somewhat more objective about the photos and I'm not as attached to them because of the scene that I shot, you know, because of the, 
the emotions that were with the trip. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, the first photo, <laughs> I printed them all. Can you see that? Yeah. The first photo, um, this one, I'll show you on the screen as well. Um, there we go. Yeah, so the first photo, this is the one that I shot kind of right at the beginning of, of the trip, right when I got up to the, the, uh, the camp area. Um, and it was kind of mostly just a, just like an excuse to get a shot under my belt. Like I didn't really think that much of it. I didn't spend that much time on it. It's a fairly simple composition. It's just, um, I mean, it's just, I thought the clouds were cool and I kind of liked the balance of like the clouds and the mountains down here. I, I think it works. Um, it's not a very complicated shot by any means, but they don't have to be. There's really not a lot of correlation between like how much time you spend in it working on a composition and whether you're gonna like it or not. I mean, it makes sense to do that. But in this case, it was um, an easy shot and I'm actually really happy with it. So um, I'll, I've got all the, like, the notes written down in here of um, like settings and all of that. So I'll, I'll post that up here at some point. But um, yeah, first shot on this camera, I guess, ever, and uh, pretty happy with it. So it's the first one. Uh, the second one, the second scene, I suppose, was the, the one that I really showed in the video. Um, that's this guy. Uh, the river with like the, the big clouds and the mountain in the background. I mean, you, just, you just saw it in the video. But um, I shot seven shots here, mostly for test purposes. I was really figuring out whether it made sense to focus at infinity or the hyperfocal distance for a shot like this. Um, I didn't notice a huge difference, but I was shooting all of these at f22, so it probably just doesn't matter at that narrow of an aperture. Um, it's an okay shot. I, all seven of them are just, they're fine. It's not, um, it's not the greatest composition. Honestly, the river didn't like contrast as much with the, the grass and the flowers as I thought it would. Um, so it's just a bit cluttered feeling. I think this one actually does look quite a bit better when I'm seeing it large like this. Like when I have this on my phone and like maybe post to Instagram, it just feels a bit like cluttered and, and stuff. But I think there's something to be said for um, different images working well at different sizes. And this one I think works much better uh, when it's printed large, when you're viewing it large, either on, either on a computer or on paper. Um, but overall I'd say it's an okay shot. It's mostly just to like test out the focus stuff and red filters and um, see what I thought about those. I will say I really like the, the red filter shots from this scene. And so I think I'll probably just continue using that whenever I want a high contrast scene, which is a lot. I like contrasty black and white shots. Um, yeah, overall it's fine. Um, I only printed one, not all seven from that scene, but that was my favorite. I think that was the one with the 50 mil, the wide lens and with the red filter. And I think I focused at infinity on that one. Um, so then the next four to finish off the roll were all from the, like the final morning of the trip. And, uh, I didn't film any of that mostly because, well, I guess mostly because this camera was, the video camera was almost out of uh, space on the memory card. I shot way too much like B roll on the way up and basically just used up the whole <laughs> memory card. Um, uh, but lesson learned, I'll bring another one next time. Um, but I also was just kind of tired of filming and I didn't want to film anymore. So uh, I took four more shots the next morning and I think they're all pretty good. I think uh, the first two I'll show, I, they're okay. I, they're not my favorites and the last two I really like. Um, so this one was for basically from the same area that I shot the previous day um, at the creek, just facing the other direction with the, the morning sunrise light kind of on these peaks here. I really liked these boulders down here and uh, worked really hard to get them in the frame. I shot this one on my wide 50 mil lens and um, I don't know, it's okay. I feel like this is kind of another one that works better when it's printed large, but even so, I think it just doesn't quite have, I don't know, it doesn't grab me nearly as much as the other ones, but yeah, not a bad shot. It's technically fine, it's just the composition's okay. Um, the other one, the second one that I think is Actually, this one I like better than that last one. It's growing on me quite a bit, um, but I don't really know what to think of it. I like kind of like the shape of these S curves in like the shadow in the mountain and how it kind of fits together like a puzzle piece. And they're just pretty mountains. Um, I'm not sure what to think of it. I think this one will just need a little bit more time. 
Um, but I think the red filter did help nicely with the contrast on that one. Um, and then these last two I actually really like. This one right here um, is just like kind of a nice reflection, a little bit of a foreground with some wildflowers, which kind of feels weird to photograph wildflowers in black and white, but I think in this case it works. Um, and even though the mountains were kind of sloping to one side, it, it feels balanced to me. And I worked on that composition for quite a while. Um, but yeah, I, I like that one. I think this is definitely one that will um, stand the test of time. It'll definitely, there's a good chance that'll end up in, in the, the book or gallery show or whatever comes of this Colorado Wild project. So yeah, I like that one. Um, and then this final one, I don't think it was the last one I shot, but the final one that, I, that I'll show you um, is definitely my favorite from the trip. Like it's a very simple scene and I didn't spend that much time working on it, but um, I don't know, as soon as I saw it on my, like uh, when I scanned it on my computer when I got home, um, it really caught my eye. And I don't remember thinking that much about it when I was taking it. It was kind of just, I think I was just trying to finish off the roll. Um, and obviously it's, it's nice. I mean, the mountains are beautiful and the light was amazing, but I didn't think a whole bunch of it, but I really like it. And I can't put my finger exactly on why, but I, I think I just kind of like the, the diagonals there and everything just feels very balanced to me. Um, so yeah, I'm, I really, really like that one. I actually went ahead and posted that one on Instagram already. Um, it's the kind of like, a, I guess the first photo that I've really publicly shared from this project. And weirdly enough, it, it ended up being, I think the most liked picture. I got the most attention on social media that I've ever had from any picture ever, which doesn't really matter, but it's kind of a nice validation that, you know, I liked this one and other people seem to also. So yeah, favorite photo from the trip by far. So yeah, great first trip. Um, really good start to the Colorado Wild Project. Just in case you missed it, I'm gonna be shooting all of the wilderness areas in Colorado, there's 43 of them, over the next several years, all on black and white film with this Hasselblad camera. Um, and probably different kinds of black and white film, although I really did like that Fuji Acros. It's like the most expensive black and white film, so I don't know if I'll do that for everyone. Um, I'm not gonna shoot a video every time I go out shooting for this project. It just feels a little bit, I don't know, excessive. Maybe focused on quality over quantity. And sometimes the video can honestly take away from the photography experience. You're focused enough on the video to where you're not fully immersed in the photography. And I think sometimes the pictures can suffer for that. But I really do like making these videos. It's fun to put them together and share them with the world and kind of show some behind the scenes of this kind of project. And I think I'll be glad that I have made these videos when I'm done with the project. So I'm gonna keep doing it, but not every time. So I think my target is about one per month, but I don't really wanna have a schedule. I think I'll just make a video whenever it feels right and publish it when I'm happy with it. So um, if you enjoyed this one, which honestly, if you're still watching at this point and you didn't enjoy it, what are you, what are you doing? But yeah, if you enjoyed it, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, you can subscribe and you'll get notifications to make sure you don't miss it, or you can sign up for my email newsletter and there should be information down in the description below, and then you can hear about it that way as well, along with any other announcements about you know, print sales or whatever else. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I think I'm probably gonna head to the Lost Creek Wilderness later today, so if that goes well, there'll be a video about that in a month or so. So see you next time, bye.